Hello, today we're going to talk about basic components for ferro chargers and their operation. My name is Vance Persons, I'm with LaMarche Manufacturing, I'm a senior engineer here. So, I will start with the basic, and so basic, we're going to get down to a com basic component. A lamination. And to that, we're going to add a, a primary coil. followed by shunts. And then we're going to add a resonant winding. And we're going to add a secondary winding. To that, we're going to add a resonating cap and we're going to add diodes. And we're going to add an output cap. That's the basic ferro. And this is really the basic ferro. Then I'm going to add to that basic ferro parts that are needed to accomplish control. triac and a control board. And for the control board we need to provide sensing. So from there we get positive sensing, negative, and I need to add a shunt for current monitoring. And that's for the control part. Well, we'll get to the control part. Now, to this, to show an operation and what's happening, I need to add an AC source. And that energizes the primary. And the primary then develops a flux field which comes this way and it has two paths, one through the shunt and one down this way through the rest of the lamination. And that's on both sides. What happens next is once we've energized the steel off the primary, energy then translates to the resonating cap. And the resonating cap then will provide a second flux field that goes this way through the shunts. This resonant cap is meant to provide energy such that the lower part here down the steel is saturated and the primary part is unsaturated and that's going up that way the primary needs to be unsaturated in order to prevent it from drawing major current and acting like a short circuit the secondary part, the trick of this is the fact that the secondary and resonant winding are saturated and they hold a solid voltage, flux and voltage, are fully filled with flux. 
and that provides basic regulation. So in a basic, uncontrolled ferrule, that's what happens. And with that, then you get your DC output, and that's controlled by the steel and output. The difficulty with the ferrule, uncontrolled, is there's no adjustment. It's all run and stated by what you got for the steel. So you need some con control and adjustment for float and equalize, for current limit, etc. So how do you do that? Well, you do that by adding a triac on the resonant winding. We have a choke on here that limits the current and also provides uh, inductance. And by doing that, by how much we turn on this choke, determines how what the output voltage is. So in a sine wave, you do that. And if you turn on, the, have the whole sine wave in, you have the whole choke in, and the inductance of the choke works into the resonant winding to cancel out some of the capacitance on the resonant capacitor. And as it cancels it out, it lowers the resonant voltage and therefore lowers the output voltage. And by controlling how much we conduct here, we control the output voltage and current. And that's the purpose of the card. The card is taking shunt information, which provides it to know what the current out is and the voltage out. So it knows what's going on there and it affects when it turns on and how much it turns on of the triad. The more it turns on, the lower the output. The less it turns on, the higher the output. So that's the whole point of what we're seeing on this. Um, that should do it for now.